Game over. SpaceX just revealed Starship's drone ship legs landing, and it changes everything. How is this even possible? Everyone thought Mechazilla arms were the only way, but SpaceX just dropped a bombshell. A 400-foot Starship landing on floating platforms with deployable legs? The FAA reveals 145 flights per year on drone ships worldwide. But why did SpaceX do this? What makes it so special? Let's dive right in. Here's the problem nobody talks about. SpaceX just announced 145 Starship flights per year. Let that sink in. The entire global space industry launched 223 rockets total in 2024. SpaceX wants to fly Starship more than half that number with a single rocket design. But here's the twist that breaks everyone's brain. Most of these won't be landing back home. Think about it. Every rocket faces the same brutal physics problem. You can either save fuel to fly back to your launch site, or you can use that fuel to carry maximum payload. There's no middle ground. It's like choosing between a sports car that looks fast or one that actually goes fast. You can't have both. For Falcon 9, this choice is manageable. The booster weighs 25 tons and needs about 30% of its fuel to return to the launch site. But Starship? We're talking about a 100-ton vehicle that's four times heavier. The fuel penalty for returning home would cripple most missions. So what's SpaceX's solution? Don't come home at all. Here's the problem nobody talks about. SpaceX just announced 145 Starship flights per year. Let that sink in. The entire global space industry launched 223 rockets total in 2024. SpaceX wants to fly Starship more than half that number with a single rocket design. But here's the twist that breaks everyone's brain. Most of these won't be landing back home. Think about it. Every rocket faces the same brutal physics problem. You can either save fuel to fly back to your launch site, or you can use that fuel to carry maximum payload. There's no middle ground. It's like choosing between a sports car that looks fast or one that actually goes fast. You can't have both. For Falcon 9, this choice is manageable. The booster weighs 25 tons and needs about 30% of its fuel to return to the launch site. But Starship? We're talking about a 100-ton vehicle that's four times heavier. The fuel penalty for returning home would cripple most missions. So what's SpaceX's solution? Don't come home at all. Let's break down what 145 annual flights actually means. SpaceX's Falcon 9 is already the world's most flown rocket with over 100 launches per year. But Starship carries five times more payload. Do the math. We're talking about more cargo to space in one year than the entire history of spaceflight combined. Here's where it gets crazy. The FASA documents reveal landing zones spanning from the Pacific to the Indian Ocean. This isn't just about rocket recovery. It's about creating a global space transportation network. A Starship could launch from Texas, deliver cargo to the International Space Station, then land on a drone ship near Australia. Another mission from Florida could service lunar operations before touching down in the Pacific. But executing this vision requires something unprecedented, a fleet of next-generation drone ships positioned around the globe. These aren't the relatively small platforms used for Falcon 9. We're talking about massive vessels, possibly three times larger, equipped with precision guidance systems and specialized handling equipment. Here's where SpaceX's strategy becomes devastating for their competitors. While Blue Origin is still trying to reach orbit, while China experiments with net-catching systems that look impressive but face massive scaling challenges, while Europe's Ariane 6 doesn't even attempt reusability, SpaceX is building a global recovery network. The technical barriers are enormous. These drone ships need to operate thousands of miles from shore, navigate complex international waters, coordinate with global logistics networks, and catch rockets that dwarf anything that's ever attempted ocean landing. The investment required is staggering. The expertise needed doesn't exist anywhere else. But here's the kicker. SpaceX already has the foundation. They've been perfecting drone ship operations for nearly a decade with Falcon 9. Booster B-1067 just completed its 29th landing, a record that seemed impossible just five years ago. Now they're scaling that expertise to a vehicle four times larger and infinitely more complex. 
The FAA documents reveal something called horizontal starship delivery. After landing vertically on the drone ship, starship would be gently lowered to horizontal using specialized equipment right on the platform. This solves multiple problems simultaneously. First, it reduces stress on the vehicle during ocean transport. A horizontal rocket is much more stable in rough seas than a vertical one. Second, it enables faster turnaround times. Instead of waiting for one drone ship to return to port, SpaceX can position multiple ships in rotation. While one is sailing back with a recovered starship, others are already in position for the next missions. Think about the implications. This creates an assembly line of space transportation. Launch, land, recover, refurbish, repeat. The economic efficiency could drop launch costs to levels that make entirely new industries possible. Space manufacturing, orbital tourism, asteroid mining. These aren't distant dreams anymore. They become practical business opportunities. But here's the detail that exposes SpaceX's true long-term thinking. Every challenge they're solving for drone ship operations directly applies to Mars missions. Landing legs that can handle Earth's harsh ocean environment will be essential for Mars operations where there's no infrastructure. Precision guidance systems that can hit a moving target in rough seas will be crucial for landing on an alien world with no GPS or ground control. The horizontal transport system being developed for drone ships could revolutionize how equipment is moved on Mars. The international cooperation required for global drone ship operations is practice for the unprecedented coordination needed for interplanetary missions. SpaceX isn't just building a rocket recovery system. They're developing the technology foundation for making humanity a multiplanetary species. And they're doing it under the cover of what looks like a simple upgrade to their existing operations. Based on current development indicators, we could see the first Starship drone ship landing as early as late 2025. But that's just the beginning. The real revolution starts when multiple drone ships are operating simultaneously, creating a global network of landing platforms. The infrastructure required is massive. These vessels need to be built from scratch. There's nothing like them in existence. They need specialized positioning systems, advanced handling equipment, and the ability to operate in international waters for extended periods. The logistics alone would challenge most countries, let alone a private company. But SpaceX has a track record of making the impossible look routine. Remember when landing a rocket booster seemed like science fiction? Now it happens multiple times per week. The same transformation is about to happen with Starship recovery operations. When launch costs drop by orders of magnitude, entirely new industries become possible. But there's a darker side to this revolution. Countries and companies that can't keep up with SpaceX's pace of innovation risk being left behind permanently. The gap between SpaceX and their closest competitors is already measured in years. If drone ship operations succeed as planned, that gap could become unbridgeable. We're not just talking about space transportation. We're talking about economic dominance of the ultimate high ground. Think about it. Whoever controls cheap access to space controls the future of human civilization. Satellite communications, Earth observation, space-based solar power, asteroid mining. All of these become economically viable when launch costs drop to hundreds of dollars per kilogram instead of thousands. So why did SpaceX reveal this plan now? Why show their hand when they could have kept it secret until the first test flight? Because they're not worried about competition anymore. The technical challenges are so enormous, the investment requirements so massive, that revealing the plan doesn't matter. By the time competitors realize what's happening, SpaceX will already have operational drone ships positioned around the globe. They'll have perfected the landing systems, optimized the recovery operations, and established the international agreements needed for global operations. This isn't just about landing rockets on drone ships. This is about SpaceX positioning themselves as the dominant force in space transportation for the next century. And based on what we're seeing, they might just succeed. So here we are. SpaceX just revealed they're not just building rockets, they're architecting the future of human civilization. Those drone ship landings aren't just about recovery, they're about unlocking Mars, enabling space cities, and making science fiction our reality. But here's what keeps me up at night. What happens when the first starship touches down on that floating platform in the Pacific? Will it be humanity's greatest achievement, or just another Tuesday for SpaceX? 
the competition is scrambling. China's building nets, Blue Origin's still reaching for orbit, and Europe's playing catch-up. Meanwhile, SpaceX is already planning their next impossible move. If you're as obsessed with this space revolution as I am, you need to see what SpaceX is secretly building next. The Block 3 Starship designs will absolutely blow your mind, and I've got the inside details that nobody else is talking about. What do you think? Are we witnessing the birth of a true spacefaring civilization, or is SpaceX moving too fast for their own good? Let me know in the comments below, because this story is just getting started. Elon Musk just shocked China and NASA with Moonbase Alpha, but how is this even possible? How can SpaceX build a permanent lunar base when China is still planning their first landing? Here's the crazy part. Musk wants to flip a massive starship on its side and turn it into humanity's first lunar home. 200 tons of cargo in one flight, five missions total, and China can't believe it. But why is SpaceX doing this now? And what makes Moonbase Alpha even possible? Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody knows. Three months ago, Elon Musk walked into a classified SpaceX meeting and said something that made NASA engineers go completely silent. We're not just going back to the moon, we're staying there permanently. But here's the crazy part. While China was still announcing their 2030 lunar plans, Musk had already secured something they didn't even know existed, a $2.9 billion NASA contract for the human landing system. And get this, 65% of that money already paid out. China's confidence just evaporated overnight. You want to know the real reason China is panicking? It's not just about going to the moon. It's about the numbers that don't lie. The moon is 225,000 miles away. Mars? Try 34 million miles. That's a six to eight month journey through deadly space radiation with zero backup plans. Musk figured out something Beijing missed completely. The moon isn't just a destination, it's humanity's final exam before Mars. If you can't build a thriving base 225,000 miles from Earth, how can you possibly survive 34 million miles away? But here's where it gets absolutely insane. This human landing system isn't just any rocket. It's a specialized Starship variant with 42 Raptor 3 engines, 33 on the booster, 9 on the lander. The raw power is absolutely mind-blowing. Here's the number that made Beijing space chiefs lose sleep. 200 tons. That's how much cargo this monster can deliver to the moon in a single flight. The legendary Saturn V that took us to the moon in the 1960s, it could only manage 100 tons. SpaceX just doubled Apollo's cargo capacity overnight. Now here's where the math gets terrifying for China. To build a 500 square meter moon base, about the size of two normal houses, you need roughly 1,000 tons of materials. With traditional rockets, that would take dozens of missions spanning decades. SpaceX can do it in five flights. Five. But wait, it gets crazier. After the Starship delivers its cargo, something unprecedented happens. The entire 50-meter-tall rocket gets flipped on its side and becomes the foundation of Moonbase Alpha itself. You heard that right. The delivery truck becomes the house. Here's how this works. Once the cargo is unloaded, Advanced robots carefully position the massive Starship horizontally. The fuel tanks get drained and converted into living space. We're talking about 800 cubic meters of habitable volume. That's more than double the entire International Space Station, which only has 388 cubic meters. China's lunar camping trip just became irrelevant. But the real genius isn't what happens above ground. While everyone's focused on the shiny sideways Starship, the actual moon base Alpha is being carved beneath the lunar surface. Why underground? Three words, cosmic radiation hell. The moon has no atmosphere, no magnetic field, absolutely nothing to protect human life from the deadly radiation bombarding it 24 seven. Stay on the surface too long and you're dead, but go underground and you're completely safe. Here's the brilliant part. SpaceX plans to use natural lava tubes, underground tunnels created by ancient volcanic activity. They'll reinforce these with 3D printed structures made from lunar regolith, the moon's own soil. And here's the part that's going to blow your mind. 
They can use water from ice deposits or even astronaut urine to create geopolymer concrete. Yes, pee becomes building material on the moon. It's disgusting, but it actually works. Here's what really shocked Beijing. Humans aren't building this base. Robots are. Think about it logically. An astronaut in a bulky spacesuit can barely move around, let alone haul tons of rock or operate heavy machinery. The moon's razor-sharp dust destroys equipment and suits within hours. The radiation exposure limits work time to minutes, not days. That's where NASA's ISRU pilot excavator comes in. This robot doesn't just dig, it extracts oxygen directly from lunar soil. And oxygen isn't just for breathing, it's rocket fuel. Suddenly, the moon becomes a gas station for Mars missions. China's space program has 